Hola, buenos días, bienvenidos. Good morning, welcome. This is a panel on this big uh, question we have about how to make uh, Latin America safer. We'll do it in Spanish. That's the preference of the panel members, and we will try to be as dynamic as possible. Obviously, this is a very broad topic. This uh, title could refer to defense. We could be talking about uh, food security, but we will focus on crime. This has to do with a reality in our region. Statistics are very clear regarding the problem of crime in the region and the demand from population. It's very common in almost all Latin American countries when we talk about um, when people are asked what are their major concerns, they always refer to crime and insecurity among the top 10 concerns. Here we have three panel members, Minister of Security of Argentina, Patricia Bullrich. With us is also the mayor of Medellin, Mr. Federico Gutierrez, and uh, Ilona Savo, who is the executive director and co-founder of the Igarapé Institute in Rio de Janeiro. It's one of the main institutes in the region dedicated uh, to these issues. So welcome, thank you. Let me now start by asking That is, uh, this panel should be focused on finding solutions rather than identifying the problem. The problem is clear. This is the most violent region in the world if we don't count uh, war areas that are at war, Latin America and the Caribbean. So the idea is to find some solutions, some innovative answers to the issue. Let me first turn the floor to the mayor of Medellin. I'd like to ask you what solutions, <coughs> what has worked in Medellin, and which are the main recommendations you would make. Good morning, everyone. Let me greet the minister, Patricia and Ilona, and uh, you, Juan Pablo, and the audience at large. There are two important things in Medellin much progress has been made, but we still have a lot to do. That's the first thing we have to say. This is an issue where you cannot uh, stop working. I always say that it's important to remove ideologies from the debate on crime. Security is not uh, right wing or left wing. It's a uh, right we need. Security is a right. It's a right we need to guarantee. We need to have a state that ensures that right. When you look at Medellin that moved from being the most violent in the world in 1991, we had 381 murders every 100,000 inhabitants generated by that absurd war <coughs> and the phenomenon of drug trafficking. There were uh, terrible um, characters that um, were associated with us and caused a very serious crime problem. It's important to understand that Medellin was in dire straits, and it was society, the one that um, took ownership of the situation and lifted their city out of this situation. It was joint work by the public sector, private sector, and universities. This is not something that the state alone can do. Working with civil society is very important. When we look at the rates today, at around 18, 19 murders every 100,000 inhabitants, after having lived what we went through, is a proof that it can be done. But security has to be something comprehensive, integral. There were marginalized areas socially marginalized areas where the state was absent, so crime goes in and they co-opt um, areas and they try to make a profit out of illegal activities. And it's key to have a comprehensive security strategy in this regard. Important things. When you look at the charts of murders in the last few years, you see a permanent decline. Last month, in March, was the month with the fewest number of murders in the last 38 years in Medellin. And this is important, because it's, but it's not the only important thing. Even if it's a murder, the highest impact crime, I always ask 
the numbers to be compared for all crimes. It's not only important to reduce the uh, number of uh, murders if there are other crimes increasing. If you ask any Latin American citizen what their priorities are among the first, there's always security and public order among their major concerns. It's important for us to lead our actions in terms of security. Local leaders or the mayor has to be in person, has to own the work relative to security. I work on security daily, and if I'm here in Argentina, I have telephone conversations on a permanent basis. But we are the ones that need to lead this process. And we see how in Latin America or in many cities where things uh, do well, they are owned by the political leaders. But if they do badly, there are problems that have to do with others. But this is something we really need to lead. It's absolutely necessary to lead this process in a comprehensive manner. Fighting against criminal structures is key. Many of these structures gain ground throughout Latin America through drug trafficking, criminal profits. There is something that's absolutely necessary in the strategy that is fighting against money laundering. And those are the, main, the two main issues we have to address in terms of criminal structures. And when we talk about a comprehensive strategy for security, we need to take into account opportunities. Who are part of the criminal structures of Latin America today? We can talk about ages between 11 and 26 years, young children, youth. That's why it's so important to avoid school, to work on school dropout levels. And this is something we've been addressing in the Medellin in the last few months. If I know that those that are there at a higher risk of belonging to criminal structures, and they are the ones that drop out of school, or that are part of the dropout statistics, what we need to do is stop dropout. Last year, we focused on the task of uh, developing a program that's called El Colegio Cuenta Con Vos, School Counts On You. And we went house by house, home by home, looking for children that had dropped out of school. School presidents gave us the lists of, the, gave us the lists of those children that had dropped out, and we went home by home, knocking doors, asking who had dropped out of school, and the neighbors would tell us in that house there are two children that dropped out. We talked to the children. We talked to their parents and grandparents. And in four months, we recovered 1,400 children and youth that had dropped out of school. That's the best structure against criminal structures. That's the best structure strategy against crime prevention. We need to have a strong state. Yes, criminal structures have to feel the power of the state. Yes, but if we do not work at the social level, the rest is useless. And let me say the following. All the social component plays a key role. If we only use a public force, but we do not offer opportunities, education, and there's something fundamental in Latin America, and that is why there's so much dropout. There, why is there such a high dropout level? You ask people why they drop out of school. Children will say, I won't finish school if I won't, primary school if I won't have access to secondary school. We have to give opportunities to the youth. We have to go beyond in our juvenile policies to prevent the development of criminal structures. And let me conclude by saying that it's useless to use the force only or to offer social, to make social offerings only. We need both at the same time. Minister, the case of Argentina is interesting because if we look at the homicide levels, you have much better statistics than the rest of the region. However, in some cities like Rosario, those uh, percentages are very high. And when we ask the population about insecurity, it's usually among the first uh, two, one or two concerns what's the ministry what the ministry is doing in this regard in argentina very well thank you thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to all of you thank you for visiting our country the truth is that yes argentina has a 6.1 a rate of 6.1 murders every 100,000 inhabitants 
but you, each country does not compare against other countries, but it compares against its own history. For, so for Argentina, 6.1 rate is high compared to 1 or 2% uh, rates that we had um, 30 years ago. So the reality is linked to the experience of each one of the countries. So we currently have high levels. In the last few years, we've been working very hard on this rate of uh, murders. And it's become one of the major concerns in our reality. We've learned a lot from Medellin's experience. We've learned from Rio de Janeiro's experience. And we are working in, on all this. You have to think that Argentina has a different structure from that of other countries, because we are a federal country. We have 24 police forces, 23 police forces in the 23 provinces, and one police force in the autonomous city of Buenos Aires. So we have 24 police forces that are devoted to offering daily security, citizen security, and four federal forces that report to the Ministry of Security that I lead. These four federal forces are devoted to what we call federal crimes or complex crimes. Federal crimes are smuggling, drug trafficking, trafficking in persons, money laundering. That is all those crimes that have a strong connotation or impact on these uh, homicide rates and these realities that the mayor just described. What have we started doing to give you a concrete example? We started a program that's called Safe Neighborhoods, Barrio Seguros, that works on conflicts created by the fight over uh, drug trafficking control that leads to a high level of crime and things that in Argentina were not very uh, common, that is, um, death um, by people that are asked to kill others, uh, wars among uh, drug traffickers, drug traffickers killing one another. And uh, we implemented a plan that's called Safe Neighborhoods and that have uh, this component that the mayor just described. We have specially prepared security forces, neighborhood prevention units with a dialogue with the population that clearly attack the bunkers, the criminal business of uh, drug trafficking, and this, what we do is work with local authorities, provincial authorities, to create a climate that favors strategic social changes. To give you an example, last year when we took office at the national level, we implemented the plan Barrio Seguros in the neighborhood 31. Many of our visitors know it. It's a slum that because of its location had a high level of participation in the drug trafficking crime. It's right in the center of Buenos Aires. We went into the slum with the security forces and with the government of the city of Buenos Aires and all the drug bunkers that used to be located there are centers where children learn karate, where they perform different uh, school-related activities. And in one year of work, we reduced the homicide rate by 62% in that neighborhood. Same thing in the city of Rosario. Rosario had become a city of a very high level of involvement in drug trafficking. Today, the national government is cooperating with the government of the province of Santa Fe, where Rosario City is located. And together with them, we've formed an operational committee. And we work on all aspects involved in this crime. And there are federal forces, provincial forces, and we work at the social level too, as part of that committee, of the work of that committee. We are very much dedicated also to our borders. Imagine that we are in a continent where we have 100% of the 
coke production of the world. We have borders with Paraguay that today has a serious problem in terms of the large number of hectares planted with cannabis, with marijuana. We have a border with Bolivia that, produce, uh, that produces coke. Peru, we don't have a border with Peru, but they have a very big problem with the production of cocaine. We don't receive much from Colombia that goes to the north mostly. And uh, we have drugs coming, synthetic drugs coming from Europe. And these are drugs that young people believe uh, they don't cause any problem and they do cause serious problems. Last week, to give you an example of how we are working in the disarticulation of uh, complicities in the city of Itati, which is a small city in the northeast of Argentina, in the province of Corrientes, we made a big uh, operation. And the mayor, the vice mayor, their families, the local head of the police force, members of the border police were put into jail because they were all involved in drug trafficking. We can fight against drug trafficking, but we have to have a clear barrier. On this side, there's a state with the security forces, with education and everything. And on this other side, there's crime. When the state is part of the crime, which I think was the big lesson learned in Colombia, when Colombia decided that their security forces were not part of the problem, and they cleaned them up, and they worked on them, and they became professional, they hit hard. Uh, those that were uh, threatened by terrorism and drug traffickers. So what we do is try to separate things. On this side, we have the state and security forces. We fully support them. But we punish those that are accomplices. Same thing with the judges and politicians. We have to be on one side and drug trafficking criminals on the other side. That is how when we separate and split very well the different fields, we will get to good results in the upcoming four years and would be very important for our Drug trafficking is, of course, one of the main fossa in the country. And here we have education and social programs as potential results. Now, well, I wanted to ask you, because the Institute works with statistics, data, technology, what can we do on that front to improve how we're working in crime-wise? Thank you. Well, the solution started coming, but I wanted to focus on one problem. We know that the concern of citizens on uh, security is much bigger than just uh, deaths. Uh, but I want to say what happens in our region. Here, Latin America, we have 8% of the world population, but 38% of uh, the uh, crimes uh, in the world of the killings uh, we or murders. We have countries that have 33% of the country, which is much higher than... So 400 people die daily in Latin America because of murder. That is 144,000 a, a year. 43 of the most violent cities in uh, the world are here. So when we take a look that I belong to civil society, I am representing here a group of 30 members of Alliance that we want to launch today, which is Life Instinct, Instinto de Vida. It's a campaign to reduce by 50% the murder rate in the region over the coming 10 years. It looks like very ambitious, but it can be done. We are reducing 7% a year, and many of the cities for example, Medellin, Ciudad Juarez, Sao Paulo have already managed to do that. How do we think we'll do that? These 30 organizations from uh, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Venezuela are oh, members of the alliance uh, working together, the IDB, the Latin American Development Bank, and the OAS, uh, together with the Open Society Foundation. We want to support the national and local governments to make sure they can start building integral parts with evidence-based strategies, because this is of the essence. We know what works and what doesn't. 
but we also want to mobilize our society. Why? Well, because we cannot accept it is not normal that we have such figures. So many years have gone by since uh, the violence has been increasing, and this is the only region in the world where, where murders are still in the growing numbers, and we believe that that's normal. It is not. So we have to go back because of the life instinct and not the death instinct. So I invite you to um, become part for the private sector, the media, academia, the governments, of course, because we will help, but we will also monitor these plans. But uh, we may have a commitment of society to lower the figures. We don't want the investments not to come to regions because there are so many crimes that our young do not have a future. We want to change the trend, so we need all of you. So we chose this space to say, get together, come with us in life instinct. And I have to do that because this means we cannot keep on killing our future. So if you want to know more, Life Instinct or instintodevida.org has a lot of material things on how we can continue in terms of strategic solutions based on evidence or evidence-based solutions and the various contexts of our societies. We already have two-thirds of the panel, so I would ask for the next uh, answers to be very short, so we may reach a final question of the public. Minister, you said that although the Argentine uh, rate uh, is low regarding the region, is high regarding our story. What is the focus? What are the main gists or areas or the most difficult part? We have domestic violence, we have uh, the police, law enforcement, and so on, and um, uh, drug trafficking. What are the problems with the areas with the biggest problems? Well, we have a murder rate that is made up of three types of murders. The first is murder due to drug trafficking, which is an intra-band, uh, so to speak, uh, murders. We are working to lower those figures, which means to get to many places uh, in Argentina. Unfortunately, we have had too many years of uh, uh, poverty growth rate, and this, of course, has been a bad thing because it, that's where they grew, and we are working to make sure that the future of the youngsters are not in the drugs, but in education, work, and uh, possibilities of making progress. This is a very important path. And as I said, in the neighborhoods where we are already present, we know how to lower the rate 62% in the case of the slum number 31. But in the city of Rosario, we have lowered 38% the rate of murders in a joint work between the government of the province, the local government, and the city of Santa Fe. In other words, when you dedicate a specific plan to work on murders that are related to the drug business, you can lower the figures. The second one is a debate we haven't started, which is the gender violence. We have many murders because of gender violence in Argentina, and we have observed something that is difficult to put on a debate. We need more scientific evidence. But what did we see? At some point in time, the world started a discussion whether we they would still keep on uh, uh, disseminating the suicide numbers. In the 60s, when suicides were reported in the media, the suicide wave would continue. So we are working on studies with our scientists on how we have seen, in some cases with very famous people, that have uh, led to gender and, uh, uh, murders, for example, by burning their partners. And we had immediately 24 similar cases. So we're working together with the Ministry of Justice and all of the provinces to analyze this phenomenon because 
between gender violence and uh, drug-related murders when we take to the murder because of theft, the rate drops a lot. Therefore, if we attack this murder because of or drug-related murder, and we have effective policies as the ones we're carrying out as in gender violence to lower the gender violence figures and in the theft-related uh, rate, it would take us to very thing, interesting rates for Argentina. Ilona has told us something, Federico, which is the standardization of violence, that it has always been there. It's the only region where we see that the rates are growing, and maybe there's this idea that maybe we're doomed for some reason to live in uh, this atmosphere. How do you break that momentum? We don't have much time. Well, the first thing I would say to Ilona, I congratulate her for doing this, and if you need any partners, you already have one. Here we are as a city to learn also from other cities and from experience and to share the experience that have been useful that we can apply. One always uh, talks about successful cases. We also should have uh, 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 unsuccessful cases, failure cases, because we have to know where we failed. And all cities have done things that are useful and things that are not. It is very important in this process to work with indicators. When we design programs, you shouldn't wait until the end of the program to assess it. You need impact indicators that will tell us very quickly if the resources we are investing are indeed leading to some results, because all of these strategies call for public funds, and you have to make the in-between decisions. Two important things. Often, when we talk about murders, we talk about uh, uh, criminal structures. That's why typification is so important. In cities like Medellin and other Colombian cities, according to what I've seen, almost 30% of murders are due to um, problems of living together or intra-family or gender murder. So you have to make a distinction. One is fighting against the uh, structures, the, the, the mafias, and another one is f the respect for life. There is a very fundamental issue, which is the war fuel, which is the drug traffic. But it is impossible for the drug traffic to get into the life if it doesn't come with high corruption levels. Fighting against corruption in all senses, in all of the institutional topics, local and regional, is of the essence. That's why we have to understand that what happens in Argentina, in Brazil, and all of these countries is directly related to transnational organizations. These organizations that have the routes, have the way to take the drug from a place A to place B. And it's really con of concern, the increase of the cultural level in a country like Colombia, where the coca uh, culture uh, crops have increased so much, is very serious. It's very serious for everybody, um, also for Colombia, for internal consumption reasons, and also for our public health uh, perspective. Addictions are really, really bad and, the, and because everything goes back to the state and I think this cannot be done. I think the family issue is more and more and more important. Where is the responsibility of the parents in the field of addictions? Because it's as if you give the kids to the state and you get them back when they're 18. And that's impossible. And I finish with this because I think it's the main, main topic, which is legality culture. If in Latin America we want to make some headway, not only in reducing crime, but also uh, fighting against uh, uh, all kind of crimes, uh, we have to fight against illegality. 
or unlawfulness. We have to know fight against illegality and we need a citizen culture. What you're saying, we have common uh, roots for everybody. Ilona, do we have common roots? Well, we know that some strategies work like the minister and Federic Federic already said, we need to have the strength in terms of law enforcement that will focus on problems. For example, we know that hotspot policing that it works on hotspots works. But we know that on the other side, investment in the early childhood is something that will always be extremely useful. Besides, um, uh, parent ability, jobs for the young, also for the young that have been uh, arrested so that they get a social reinsertion to avoid crime. And just like Medellin, the question of urban say, space, anything that promotes living together. We know this works. We know we need leadership that wants to uh, implement in the evidence-based policies. Of course, if we can, uh, we, we should lower the rates. If we can reduce 50% in 10 years, we can save 30, 365,000 lives in 10 years. And together we can, on our own, we can't. That's why we are calling on society to participate, to support the governments, and uh, make sure the governments commit to get a solution in the long run uh, so as to place the co continent on the map, not because of the murders, because, but because of the development. That number is extraordinary. 365,000 lives one can save if we have the appropriate public publicities. Thank you very much for participating in this panel and for giving us all of these ideas to solve this main, main problem of Latin America. Thank you very much.